Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm your host, Will. I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. So before we get into it, make sure that you like, click, and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that comment button. Let me know what you think, whether good or bad. So now on today's episode, I have a very special guest. My guest is Chris. Chris is a really good buddy of mine. He hit me up, said, hey, Will, I want to be a part of the Sarcasm Orgasm team. I'm like, well, sure, come on down. Let's have some banner and get it going. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, man. Good, good. That's good to hear. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's always my pleasure. Well, hey, you know, the pleasure's all mine. So, <laughs> but so, um, so like in our pre interviews, you were telling me about a book that you that you did. So tell me more about that, please. It's called uh, Male Oppression. Ah, okay. Yeah. And it is a book about how men have been oppressed as well as women all throughout history. And so women don't get to have a monopoly on oppression. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's about time someone spoke the logical truth about what us men go through. I mean, women complain. Women complain that, oh, I've been nine months pregnant. You have no idea. Well, ho, I've been carrying around those babies in my sperm for the longest time. So who's really pregnant? <laughs> we had to listen to you for nine months. Yes. Yes. It's really easy. Yeah, I know. Like, you know, share the wealth just a little bit. Just a little bit. So um, with you coming up your book, with your book, like, how did you come up with the concept? How long did it take you to write and so forth? So I got I got kind of tired about hearing about uh, toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. and so this is a, a rebuff to toxic masculinity. You know, it starts out with Adam and Eve, and uh, how Eve being inappropriate in the Garden of Eden got Adam kicked out of his paradise. True, very true. And yeah. It hasn't really stopped since. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. But yet, that's what you call sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah but um so how long did it take you to write it uh it was first book so it was like right at a year mm -hmm. from when we got the idea till we got it published okay and you self-published you said right self-published yeah so can you explain that process like what's the difference between self-publishing and someone else publishing it so we went with a it's considered like a there's a couple different varieties. You know, you have vanity publishers, so people write their biographies or something special about them. And that's when we go. What we actually did was we went through a, a micro publisher. Okay. And so you give them a little bit of money and they format your words for, you know, Kindle, Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, and stuff like that. Okay. So we're available on uh, all ebooks. We're available through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and MailOppression.com. And if you go through MailOppression.com, you actually get a signed copy. Oh, all right, all right. Listen, to that folks, you get a signed copy, a signed copy. And it's, Chris himself. It's yeah. Well, well, everybody likes a good deal. <laughs> so. Uh, from what you've learned so far like now through the book itself is it just you from a perspective like is it a personal narrative or is it just like a collection of stories after so it, adam e part it's a there's a lot of history involved you know it actually goes back to cavemen days and, and having to go out and fight the woolly mammoths and the extremely large cows that they had back then and uh you know because we have the archaeological evidence that you know of spear wounds and the rib cages and stuff like that so we know that they were hunting these animals mm -hmm. and how women were protected at the time because you know they were the child bearers they were the only way to reproduce um, mm -hmm. you know same as now you can have if you have a hundred women and only one man that's still going to reproduce the human species. But if you have a hundred men and only one woman, it's not going to happen. And no, so, it's not. 
you know that's I think that's what China is in right now because you know they yeah. like to throw away all the women. <laughs> they, they did. They learned it real quickly. <laughs> they, they did. It's dying off. <laughs> they, they are well above that curve now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now they're becoming gay. So it's just. <laughs> oh my they god! Got to go in and reteach masculinity in China. Really? Seriously. No shit, please tell me more. That that's interesting to hear. That really so, is. With them having not enough females, because I think it's three to one male versus female in China right now. And so they're they don't have the female population to reproduce, so they're getting more and more the males are getting more and more uh feminine. Uh and so the the government is having to take over and teach men how to be men and introduce more masculine, more masculinity into the society. So, so the government planning didn't work out quite like they were planning. <laughs> no, they did it. <laughs> so, it. So there's an orgasm for this one. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> wow. Wow. So in your in your dealings and in your teachings, what have you found, if not from just or like one society from the next, what is really, really lacking when it comes to men these days? Well, and so the, the thing about the book is it's not an attack on women whatsoever. Okay. It's really a, you know, let's talk about what's really good because mm -hmm. men and women, the yin and the yang of you know, the yin and the yang, the black and the white peace sign. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's it's true because men need women and women need men. And there's good and bad mixed in all of it. Yes. And so you just have to balance everything out, and that's that's exactly what that symbol is. And so that's what we really get into, where it's like you know, don't take your partner for granted, but also don't let your partner take you for granted. Um, we both have equal parts to play in the whole thing. We do, but it also takes the right two people to find that equal balance. Like my mother always likes to keep telling me, all men are assholes, all women are bitches. So you just got to find the best one. So <laughs> It's like a lovely joke going around right now. You know, every woman is bi. You just have to figure out if they're if it's sexual or polar. Yeah. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. <laughs> true very true there are, there are a lot of bi women around here and it's it's damn depressing it really is because you think you found a good one then you find out oh she's just not interested in your dick bro she just wants your money so <laughs> but what's the uh what has been the overall perception of your book since you have published it and it's been out there uh in the market to read and get it's still very small right now because the because we're self-publishing you know we don't have the big major publisher mm -hmm. money coming in to to yeah. really push it um but it's doing really well we just had a guy who bought it and then turned around and gave us a call and said hey send me 12 more and i'm gonna hand them out to all my friends okay all right. So it's almost like there's there's not a lot of, there hasn't been a lot of market there because of like you said money and sort. So it's just like almost like here say like here read the book let me know and then give it back type of deal. Yeah, well, I mean you know we've been doing social media stuff and things like that, but mm -hmm. okay, that, that's just us and the people we know pretty much. But everybody's kind of spreading the word and it's kind of getting a groundswell. So really happy about that. So we ain't gonna go on a book tour. Uh, well, technically, I'll actually be on a, a mini book tour in a couple of weeks because okay. my fiance and I are getting married in Wisconsin, and the we're doing a signing at the bookstore up there. Oh, nice, nice! So you're gonna like basically just have books with you and like hand them out and then sell them at the same time. Yep. You gonna take pictures too? Uh, probably. Are you gonna charge for those? No. Okay. I didn't know if you were one of those offers who like not only charges for a signature, but charge for 
the pitch return. So no, just just charge for the book. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so, like, what kind of book is it? Is it hardback, paper? Uh, it's a little paperback. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like 120 pages. It's an easy read, and you get some knowledge out of it. And one of the other things is, you know, I mean, we really start out with the book. In the very beginning, the book says, you know, if you're a feminist, this probably isn't your cup of tea. But at the same time, you know, I'm sure that you hear a lot of times, you know, where have all the good men gone? Yep, all the time. The book actually lays out, if, if a female reads the book, you know, she's going to get some insight as to what she should actually be looking for in a male. And you know what? When I hear that saying, I always rebuttal like, well, you probably swallowed him. Or you didn't do the time of day, one way or the other. Yeah, I know. Either way, you missed out. <laughs> wow, wow. The same guys usually know. aren't the ones in your face hitting on you all the time. No, no, no. It's usually on your face or in your stomach. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to make light up. Just, I was just being sarcastic. <laughs> So when you was like sitting down and, you know, putting the pen to the pack, coming up with the ideas, what did you learn that you didn't know already from the book? Um, a lot of the studies, especially the medical studies. So, you know, we go into ADD, ADHD a little bit and some mm -hmm. of the mental health issues with young men yeah. or young males and how, you know, 90% of um people diagnosed with ADHD are male. Okay. Why? Because men are they 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 think and feel and do with their bodies. And so, you know, sitting in a classroom for, you know, 6 hours a day is not set up for males. It's really not. And so looking at those studies and everything that's that we put in the book, you know, it it brought a lot of insight and because i was diagnosed with add when i was young and um you know had me on ritalin and didn't like the way it made me feel mm -hmm. yeah and so, you know really went into doing that research and saying well if schools are supposed to be set up for both boys and girls why is it that you know so many boys are diagnosed with not being able to sit and have to fidget all the time. And so, you know, looked at that and did a deep dive and found out that, you know, it is the the male attention span. If the body's not going, the brain's not really going. It, it, mm -hmm. The brain's in a different place if the body's not going. And so, you know, keeping that interactive. And a lot of schools are actually really picking up on that and changing the way they do things. So they have like beanbag chairs in the classroom and stuff like that. Wow, that is interesting to hear because I used to think I had AD, ADHD or something like that, but I didn't. I was just lazy and I didn't want to pay attention. So. It, it, you probably still technically do because like if you can't sit there and just focus, that's one of the major things for ADD or ADHD. Well, now I can because I know I have a goal in mind. Back then, I just didn't like school. Like I school. Like I hated school. I was good. Don't get me wrong. I can do all my work, but there were just at times it just became boring because I would do my work, finish there, and sit there until everybody else got done. I was one of those type of students. So. And then, then your brain starts rebelling, saying, mm -hmm. you know, I got this, I'm good. And then you miss something and then you're six months behind. Yeah, yeah. So, and then I got held back a year because of something like that. So it's like, it was a good, but then it was a bad. And then I'm like, fuck, this sucks, it really sucks. But when I did go to a doctor, I wasn't diagnosed. I was just diagnosed with being lazy. So at least that's well, what the doctor said. 
that's actually a really good thing because they didn't put you on those medications. No, nope, no, nope, but you know, I was suffering with a bowel depression, so I had to take well U-turn, which sucked. But that's neither here nor there. But I, I get what you're saying, and I can understand because um, some of the things that you're saying, my brother went through, and he was diagnosed with it, and he was on meds, so that was a little different for me dealing with what was going on with him so i completely understand i really do i do but and, it's, it... and the research that's coming out you know because this really started in the 80s mm -hmm. um 80s 90s were big for the add adhd diagnosis and um they're coming out they're starting to see the really long-term effects of keeping boys on this medication for so long yeah. And, you know, it leads to depression and certain other anxieties, which aren't good. No, it's not. But then, like, some of those meds, they, they'll trigger other things, and then it'll make it even worse. So it's just almost like there's a cause and effect to ADHD because it's going to bring up something else that you did not know was there. Like, it was just, it's lingering under, under the surface until hey, the medicine is in your system after a month and a half and now you got more problems than you actually have. Like my nephew, uh, my brother's son, he has he has ADHD, he has Asperger's and something else. So he's battling with like three things at one time, but there's always some type of issue with him. I love him to death, don't get me wrong, but they're just, he has his good days and his bad days. So. I mean, as we all do, it's just when you have multiple issues like that, it really expounds on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I it's just hard. Thing, sorry. No, I said it's just hard some days for him. And one of the things that I've been told, you know, since writing the book is, you know, a parent was getting their kid, their kid had a diagnosis for ADHD. And they're like, I got an idea. So they would actually go out and run with their kid in the morning before school, then come back, take showers, and then go to school, go to work. And that actually super focused the, the kid when he went mm -hmm. back. Wow. Because wow. he got all that, that morning energy out. So you just let them go in the field and just run around a little bit and then yeah. bring them in? They would, they would <laughs> run down the sidewalks and run back. Okay, I think I need to start doing that. Get my morning walk in. That would help be woken and ready to work. <laughs> well, I, I think you do enough of it anyway. Oh, well, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to get into my business. No, everybody don't need to be know what I do. Like, off camera. <laughs> so, before I get you out here, Chris, I look in the book. What are some other things that you might be have going on? Do you got another one coming out or are you working on another one? So, what you got going on? Got a couple going out in the future. Right now, we're focusing on this one. Uh, my fiance has got a six book series about ancient aliens that's going to be coming out soon. You know, getting married and dealing with all kinds of like family stuff. And so, mm -hmm. right now, we're focusing on this book and doing the do. I hear that. Well, you know, it's nice to talk to a published author, a published author who actually wants to come on. You know, sarcasm, orgasms, because I've reached out to a couple of offices like, no, I can't come on there. Your your name of your show is just way too taboo. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> Everything <laughs> is a bad thing, apparently. Yeah, apparently, apparently. So I thank you so much for coming on um, and talking with me and telling me about your book. I would definitely go and be a paid one and uh, get a copy. That way you can see my donation to you and the cause. Because I would definitely love to learn more about the uh, male perspective. <laughs> awesome. It's a fun book. It's pretty lighthearted and it's easy read. So Now when you say easy read, because I've had reads before to where I'll get like five pages in and then I'll fall asleep. So will this at least keep my attention? You know, it's it's written in a way because, you know, my fiance and I did, wrote it this way on purpose where it's because men have short attention spans. You know, that's part of the book. Let's and, tease you know, involved. It's it's something you can read, you know, a little bit of put it down and pick it up and remember where you were at and keep okay. going. 
Okay, I like the sound of that. All right, cool. It's, it's actually funny. Her dad called it his toilet book. Because, you know, he can sit down five, ten minutes, whatever, and read it, put it down, comes back the next next time and keeps going. Uh, hey, I like that. That's that's the type of reading I'm in for. So I, I definitely <laughs> add that to my collection. So <laughs> I, okay. I hope you know and I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, definitely. And when you have when you're ready for you and your girl or well you and your wife's book to come out, you're always welcome to come and talk more about that going on. So I welcome the invitation is open. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for coming on and speaking with me. So please, please, please go ahead and promote your book one more time so they know where to get it and what the name of it is. All right. It is Male Oppression. Oops, there we go. Mm -hmm. And it is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or MaleOppression.com or anywhere that ebooks are available. All right, you heard it here, folks. Mel Oppression, please go get that and support a local person just trying to do the damn thing. We're trying to make him the next, and I mean the next. <laughs> Stephen King. <laughs> well, they not that bored. Oh, no, no, but no. you still need to learn about the Mel Oppression because it's going on every single day. Every it day. is going on every single day. Yes. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining me. I appreciate it. And folks, this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I have been joined by my guest, Mr. Chris McDaniels, with the book, The Male Oppression. Make sure you go get that wherever books are sold, or you can even go listen to it on your Kindle. So I'm Will, and I'll talk to y'all soon.